what's up guys welcome back to the channel world beats games i'm will and today i'm presenting part two of my xbox 360 collection i have over 220 games and just like before as we go along i'll be displaying the value and the rating according to price charting and metacritic but before we get started if you guys been enjoying the content help support the channel hit that like button comment and subscribe if you haven't already so let's not waste any more time and let's get right to it all right so part one ended at 115 so we're gonna start it at 116 with injustice gods among us by wb games and nether realm studios that's the same team that developed the latest mortal kombat games this one was released in 2013 and it's basically the definitive edition of the game. All right, and at 117, we got Lego Indiana Jones, the original Avengers. Now this is part of a double pack that comes with Kung Fu Panda. It was included in some of those Xbox 360 bundles when you bought the console. And it's backwards compatible on Xbox One and the Series X. All right, and following we got the sequel, Lego Indiana Jones 2, The Avenger Continues. These games are always fun to play with the whole family and earn some achievements as well. All right, now 119 we got one of my favorites, The King of Fighters 13 by Atlas and SNK Playmore. Now this game was re-released on the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch, but it wasn't released on the Xbox One. So if you want to play this game in one of the modern consoles, you gotta get the Xbox 360 version. It's backwards compatible on the Xbox One and the Series X. Alright, and following we got Kung Fu Panda. Now this is basically the other side of the Lego Indiana Jones game, but like I said before, it's a double pack and it comes with two full games. And this one is actually not that bad. Check this one out if you never played it. Alright, and next we got Lost Odyssey, exclusive to the Xbox 360, and it was developed by Miss Walker, the same team that did the Blue Dragon game. This is back when Microsoft wanted some exclusive RPGs for the Xbox 360. The game was developed by the creators of Final Fantasy, and this game is excellent right here. And at 122, we got Lego, The Lord of the Rings, another one that's backwards compatible in the Series X. And this game actually has some value. At one point, it was almost at 30 bucks. And believe it or not, the Platinum Hits edition is actually worth more. And at 123, we got Little League Baseball, World Series 2010. Now this game right here is kind of cool. It's more of an arcade baseball game instead of a simulator. Your characters look like a chibi style where they have the big heads and this game is actually a lot of fun. Check this one out if you never played it. All right, and following we got Lost Planet Extreme Condition. It's a third person shooter and it was released in 2007. This game kind of reminds me of Gears of War but you're playing like in the snow and you're fighting these huge creatures. It's backwards compatible on Xbox One and Series X, so if you get the chance, try this one out. And the follow-up, Lost Planet 2 by Capcom. So this game is pretty similar to the original, but for some reason, it got a lower score in Metacritic. You could do co-op during the campaign, and after you complete it, you unlock Marcus from Gears of War. Alright, and next we got Left for Dead by Valve. Now this is one of my favorites right here. I remember putting a lot of hours on this game with a bunch of my friends. But this one is the Game of the Year edition. It comes with all the DLC and is backwards compatible in the Series X. Exclusive to the Xbox 360. And following we got the sequel, Left for Dead 2. Again by Valve, the same team that did Half-Life and portal so this one i never really played as much as i played the first one i remember putting a couple of hours on it but that's about it for some reason i never got on this one like we played the original 
And at 128, we got L.A. Noir by Rockstar Games. Now, this game right here is basically GTA, but it takes place back in the days, like in the Mafia era. This game has some technology that only was used once in this game and never used again, and it's pretty cool. Check this one out for sure. And next, we got The Last Remnant by Square Enix. Now, this game was exclusive to the Xbox 360 up to recently. It was remastered on the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. It's not backwards compatible, but I remember I picked this game up in the street for like two bucks. Alright, and following we got Max Payne 3 by Rockstar Games. Now this game right here is pretty badass. It still has the bullet time like in the previous games, but this one has a new cover system and you can hide behind walls to protect yourself. Definitely check this game out if you never played. Alright, and next we got a cool one right here. Midway Arcade Origins. Now this game is basically packed with over 30 classic arcade games from Midway. It has classics that I remember when I was a kid like Pit Fighter, Rampage, and Joust, and a bunch of others. It's backwards compatible on the Series X, so if you see this one, give it a shot for sure. Alright, and following we got Metro. 2033 by THQ and developed by 4A Games. Now this game right here was exclusive to Xbox 360 and it was based on the Russian novel. It's the first of a trilogy. Check these games out if you never played them. And at 133 we got Mafia 2 by 2K Games. Now this game right here is basically 2K's version of GTA another open world action game and is the best out of the trilogy the platinum hits version comes with all the dlc so if you see this one pick it up for sure all right and following we got marvel ultimate alliance by activision and raven software that's the same team that did the x-men origins wolverine game this one plays like diablo it has that overhead camera view and you fight with a four-man team this is a great action RPG right here. If you never tried it, trust me, pick this one up for sure. And following, we got the sequel, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. Now, this one was developed by another team, Vicarious Visions. It pretty much plays the same as the first one, but the game does have some value. So if you see it out there for cheap, trust me, just pick it up. All right, and following, we got Marvel vs. Capcom 3 by Capcom. I remember going to the arcades and playing these games growing up. And when this one came out, it didn't disappoint. I remember I bought it on the first day. Alright, and following we got Magna Carta 2 by Bandai Namco. This game has a gorgeous art style. It's a turn-based RPG and this game actually has some value. It's worth over 40 bucks, and it got a 69 on Metacritic. And at 138, we got Metal Gear Rising Revengeance by Konami and Platinum Games. Now, this game right here is excellent. This is basically the male version of Bayonetta. It has the same hack and slash style, and this game is super fun. If you're a fan of Devil May Cry and all those type of games, Try this one out for sure. It's backwards compatible in the Series X. Alright, and following we got Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes by Konami. It's pretty much a prequel to Metal Gear Solid 5. It's like a demo you can beat in half an hour. And Konami actually packaged this game and sold it at full price. I was able to get this game for pretty cheap. But it's part of the package when you play Metal Gear Solid 5. Alright, and at 140 we got Mass Effect by Bioware. That's the same team behind Knights of the Old Republic and Dragon Age. Now when this game was released in 2007, it was exclusive to the Xbox 360. It's a Metacritic must play and is backwards compatible on the Series X. Alright, and following we got Mortal GP 08 by Capcom. Now this game right here is pretty unusual. I never seen a racing game by Capcom. So when I saw it, I had to pick it up. The game has a 76 on Metacritic, so it can't be that bad. Get it, 
All right, and at 142, we got Mortal Kombat 9 by WB Games and NetherRealm Studios. Now, if you're gonna pick this game up, make sure you get the Platinum Hits Edition. It comes with all the DLC, and you even get Freddy Krueger part of the roster. All right, and next we got EA Sports Presents MMA. Now, this one was released in 2010, and they got a 79 in Metacritic. One of the main reasons why I got this game is because Marlo Ronaldo is one of the announcers, and I'm a big fan of that dude. He even shouts out Mamma Mia. And at 144, we got Madden NFL 2008 by EA Sports. So this is when Madden finally took over the NFL license, and there was no other football games out in the market. But luckily the developers t know how to make a solid football simulator. And following we got Madden NFL 2009. Now this is the 20th anniversary collector's edition. And I remember my brother got me this for my birthday once. He told me he paid like two bucks for it at Goodwill. A bunch of years later and this game actually has some value. Alright, and following we got, ooh, this is one of my favorites right here, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 by EA and Black Box. Now this game right here was released on the PS2 and the original Xbox, but if you want to play it in HD, you gotta get the Xbox 360 version. Alright, and next we got Need for Speed The Run. Now this game right here is one of my favorite Need for Speed games. You do a race that starts in San Francisco and it ends in New York. So you basically travel across the country. And in between the races, sometimes you get out of the car and it does a bunch of quick time events. All right, and following we got Need for Speed Pro Street. Now this one was actually the first game that was developed exclusively for the seventh generation. This one kind of fused the arcade style with the simulation. I didn't really play this one too much, but let me know down below in the comments if you tried it. All right, and at 149, we got Need for Speed Shift 2 Unleashed. Now this one right here is actually more of a simulator style, so it plays more like Gran Turismo. It was developed by Slightly Mad Studios, and they got an 82 on Metacritic. following we got 99 nights another xbox 360 exclusive this one plays pretty similar to dynasty warriors you battle hundreds of foes simultaneously Can it be? all right and at 151 we got ninja guiding 2 by tecmo and team ninja this is the same team behind Dead or Alive and Neo on the PlayStation 4. This one is also exclusive to the Xbox 360 and is backwards compatible on the Series X. Alright, and at 152 we got Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Generations by Bandai Namco and CyberConnect2. It's a 3D fighter and it was released in 2012. If you're a fan of the show, this is a must play. Alright, and next we got NBA Live 2007 by EA Sports. Now I remember when these games were coming out and they were competing with the 2K games. They were getting their asses kicked. But back in the days, the NBA Live games were the better ones. Alright, and following we got NBA 2K11 by 2K Sports. Now this is when they actually got the rights to feature Michael Jordan. They did this whole Jordan challenge mode where you play a bunch of his historic moments. Trust me, if you're a big fan of Jordan, this is a must have. And at 155 we got one of my favorite 2K games right here, NBA 2K14. 
by 2K Sports. Now I remember playing this game like crazy. I used to pick the Knicks and they were deadly from the 3 point line. This one got LeBron James on the cover and they got an 87 on Metacritic. Alright and following we got The Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion by 2K Games and Bethesda. Now this one is a RPG, it has a first person view and it's backwards compatible in the Series X. It was released in 2006 and it's a Metacritic must play. Alright and next we got Pocket Bike Racer from Blitz Games. I remember when these games first came out and they were selling them in Burger King. They actually play on the original Xbox as well. Out of all three games, this was the best one. It's basically a Mario Kart ripoff. Alright, and at 158 we got Portal 2 by Valve. The same team behind Half-Life and Team Fortress. Now this game right here is a Metacritic must play. It's pretty much a puzzle game. Try this one out if you never played it. And at 159 we got Pure by Disney and BlackRock. That's the same team that did Split Second. They make some great racing games and this one is no different. It's part of another double pack that came with the Xbox 360 bundle. But I always see this game out there for cheap. Pick this one up if you never tried it. Alright and next we got Prey by Venom Games. Now this one right here has nothing to do with the last Prey game that came out. But it is a first person shooter and your character is a Native American. I remember renting this game back in the days in Blockbuster and I actually got pretty far but I never finished it. It's backwards compatible in the Series X. And at 161 we got Project Gotham Racing 3 by Bizarre Creations. That's the same team that did 007 Bloodstone and Blur. They make some great racing games and this one is exclusive to the Xbox 360. It's an arcade racer and it got an 88 on Metacritic. And following we got the sequel, Project Gotham Racing 4, also by Bizarre Creation. Now this is the last Project Gotham Racing game they made, but these games are excellent. Released in 2007, and they got an 85 on Metacritic. And at 163 we got Prototype by Activision and Radical Entertainment. That's the same team that did the Scarface game and the Hulk's Ultimate Destruction. This one is pretty similar to the infamous games on the PlayStation. Alright and following we got the sequel, Prototype 2, again by Radical Entertainment. Now this one I never got to play, but it was released in 2012 and it got a 74 in Metacritic. It got a worse score than the first one, but I'm sure this game is not bad. And at 165 we got Resident Evil 5, the Gold Edition. Now this one comes with all the DLC. And I remember when this game first came out, everyone was playing it. Now this one is pretty fun, cause it has the co-op mechanic. But unless you're playing with a friend, the computer could be a little frustrating. Alright and next we got Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City by Capcom. Now this game gets crapped on a bit, but if you play with some friends, it's actually pretty fun. It's backwards compatible in the Series X, and they got a 52 on Metacritic. And at 167 we got Remember Me by Capcom. Like I said before, I love to pick up Capcom games, and this one is pretty cool. It's a futuristic action adventure game. It was released in 2013, and they got a 70 on Metacritic. I see this game actually gaining some value after a while. And at 168 we got the classic right here, Red Dead Redemption by Rockstar Games. One of the greatest games I've ever played right here. It's basically Grand Theft Auto, but western style. A Metacritic must play.
All right, and following we got Red Faction Guerrilla by THQ and Volition. This one is an open world action game. You have a sledgehammer in this game and you get to destroy a lot of the environment. And at 170, we got Residents of Fate by Sega and Triace, the same team behind Star Ocean. Now this game right here is pretty badass. It's super stylish and it has a steampunk aesthetic. It could take over 60 hours to complete. And at 171 we got Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now this one right here mixes up all the Star Wars movies into one game. It was released in 2007 and it got an 80 on Metacritic. It is a great stress-free co-op game. And following we got Lego Star Wars 2 The Original Trilogy. Now this one focuses on episode 4, 5 and 6 The Original Trilogy. It's backwards compatible in the Series X like every other Lego Star Wars game. I always see these games out there for cheap. And finally we got Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. This one basically focuses on some of the prequels. It's the last Lego Star Wars game they released before they switched up the style and used more of that over the shoulder view. And at 174 we got Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. I remember the original one is badass. You get to play as Darth Vader, but I don't remember trying this one too much. It's backwards compatible on the Series X, so I'm definitely gonna play this one. The main character of this game is named Starkiller. That was the original name they used in the script for Star Wars before they changed it to Skywalker. And at 175 we got Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection by Sega. Now this game right here has all the classic Genesis games. I mean like all the ones you could think of, they're most likely in here. Streets of Rage, Sonic, Comic Zone, and Fantasy Star, just to name a few. Trust me, if you're a Genesis fan, this is a must own. And at 176, we got the infamous Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 by Sega and Sonic Team. Now, this is basically the Sonic game that always gets crapped on. When it first came out, it was glitchy as hell, but it actually plays worse on the PS3. If you want to get some fun out of this game, try it on the Xbox 360. And following we got Sonic Unleashed, again by Sega and Sonic Team. Now this game right here is pretty weird. In the daytime, you play the classic style Sonic 3D games. But when the night falls, you change it to this creature and it changes up the game style. It becomes more of like a beat em up. And to be honest, it's not that great. Alright and finally we got Sonic Generations. Now this one right here is one of the best Sonic games that came out in the recent years. It mixes all the best elements from the 3D Sonic and the 2D Sonic games. If you're a fan, trust me, this is a must play right here. These games actually might gain some value after the movie comes out. And at 179 we got Saw by Konami and Zombie Studios. Now this game right here is pretty janky. But every time I check, the value keeps going up. I got this game at GameStop for 20 bucks, and I also picked up the sequel. And following we got the sequel, Saw 2 Flesh and Blood by Konami and Zombie Studios. The same team that developed the first one, but this one actually got a worse rating. It was released in 2010 and they got a 47 on Metacritic. Alright and at 181 we got The Saboteur by EA and Pandemic Studios. That's the same team that did Destroy All Humans and the Star Wars Battlefront games. Now this one is basically GTA mixed with Assassin's Creed. You get to drive around in an open world but you could climb buildings as well. Alright, and next we got 
Spec Ops The Line by 2K Games and Jaeger. Now this game right here is actually a sleeper. It's a third person shooter, but this one is pretty unique. It has a great story and an awesome twist at the end. Trust me, if you never played this game, give this one a shot for sure. It's backwards compatible in the Series X. Alright, and next we got The Simpsons Game. This game was actually developed by the studio that became Visceral Games, the developers of Dead Space and Dante's Inferno. They also did the original Godfather game. If you're a fan of the show, this is a must own. It's like playing an 8 hour episode of The Simpsons. And at 184 we got Skate by EA and Black Box. That's the same team that did a bunch of the Need for Speed games. And this is basically the competition to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. But it's more of a simulator style. The camera position is different in this one. It's like glowing behind your board. And at 185 we got the sequel, Skate 2, by EA and Black Box as well. Now this one right here is backwards compatible in the Series X, and it actually has some value. I got this one for like 5 bucks a couple of years ago, and last time I checked, it was like over 20 bucks. And at 186 we got Samurai Showdown Sen by SNK Playmore. Now this one right here is an Xbox 360 exclusive, and it's pretty different to all the other Samurai Showdown games. This one plays more like in the 3D style, more like Soul Calibur. And at 187 we got Saints Row 2, again by THQ and Volition, the same team that did the Red Faction games. This is basically the most famous GTA ripoff. But the difference of these games is that they're super silly. It's backwards compatible in the Series X and they got an 81 on Metacritic. And at 188 we got Soul Calibur 4 by Bandai Namco. This one had Yoda and the PS3 version had Darth Vader. This is one of the best 3D fighting games ever made right here. And at 189 we got Section 8 by South Peak Games and Timegate Studios. Now this game right here is a first person shooter. It has a campaign, but this game was pretty much built for the multiplayer. The servers are down, but it got a 69 on Metacritic. And at 190 we got Star Ocean The Last Hope by Square Enix, developed by Triace. This is the first Star Ocean game to ever be on the Xbox. It was also released on the PS3, but under another title. If you're gonna get this game, I think it's better to get the PS3 version. But this one is backwards compatible in the Series X. Alright, and next we got Split Second by Disney and BlackRock. Again, this is the same team behind Pure. They make some great racing games, and this one is pretty outstanding. It has that super fun arcade style. It's backwards compatible in the Series X, and they got an 82 on Metacritic. And at 192, we got Spider-Man Web of Shadows by Activision and Treyarch. The same team behind a bunch of Call of Duty games and the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Man games. This game has been skyrocketing in price. And at 193. All right, and next we got Street Fighter 4 by Capcom and Dims. Now I remember when this game first came out in 2009. I bought it on day one and it was the first time I ever played Street Fighter online. A Metacritic must play. And following we got Super Street Fighter 4. Basically an expansion pack but of course they repackaged it and sold it to everybody again. All the Street Fighter games from this generation are backwards compatible in the Series X. And at 195 we got South Park The Stick of Truth by Ubisoft and Obsidian. That's the same team that did Fallout New Vegas and Alpha Protocol. 
Now this game right here is amazing. It basically plays like a long ass episode of South Park, but RPG style. And at 196, we got Stuntman Ignition by THQ. Now this game is kind of cool. It's an arcade racer, but you gotta perform stunts like you're filming a movie. Trust me, play this game if you never tried it. And next we got XXX by EA Sports. Now I'm a big fan of XXX Tricky, but I never got to play this one right here. I know they switched up the style a lot on this one, but it's backwards compatible in the Series X and they got an 82 on Metacritic, so I definitely want to check this one out. And at 198 we got Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, Conviction. This one is an action stealth game and it's pretty much Ubisoft's answer to Metal Gear Solid. And at 199, we got the sequel, Tom Clancy's Sprinter Cell Blacklist, again by Ubisoft, and this one got an 82 on Metacritic. This one comes packaged with two discs, so make sure if you get it that it's complete. And at 200, we got Sega Superstars Tennis by Sega and Sumo Digital. That's the same team that did the Sonic All-Star Racing games and the last OutRun games that came out on the original Xbox and the PlayStation 2. This one is pretty fun. It got a 67 on Metacritic and it features a lot of characters from a bunch of different Sega games. And at 201, we got Superman Returns from EA and WB Games. Now this game right here is like an open world action game. You get to fly around the city as Superman, and I have a feeling that this game could gain some value after James Gunn's Superman comes out. So keep an eye out for this one. And at 202, we got Box Office Smash. Seen it? Exclusive to the Xbox 360. This game is a lot of fun when you play with your friends. I'm a big film buff, so I love movie trivia. And following we got lights camera action seen it so this is basically the one that came out before and it comes with four controllers that you can use to buzz your answer and at 204 we got Tekken Tag Tournament 2 by Namco now I'm a huge fan of Tekken and when I saw this game was backwards compatible in the Series X I had to pick it up right away it got an 83 on Metacritic and it's basically Tekken but with tag fighting And at 205, we got Table Tennis by Rockstar Games. Now this game right here is pretty cool. It was developed as an in-house game to test the new GTA engine. And they liked the game so much that they actually released it as a ping pong game. It's backwards compatible in the Series X and I always see this game out there for cheap. Give this one a shot if you never tried it. All right, and next we got Tetris Evolution by THQ. Now this one is actually exclusive to the Xbox 360. And I love Tetris games, so I always pick them up when I see them. Alright, and following we got Nickelodeon's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Activision and Magic Pockets. Now this game right here pretty much plays like a classic beat-em-up, but unfortunately it got a really low rating score. I'm a huge fan of the Turtles, so I picked it up anyway. Alright, and next we got Time Shift by Sierra and Saber Interactive. Now this game is kind of cool. It's a first person shooter, but you have this mechanic where you collect rewind time. It's backwards compatible on the Series X, so if you're gonna try it, try it out on Xbox 360. And at 209, we got from the creators of Dark Souls, Tenchu Z by Microsoft and Front Software. This one is exclusive to the Xbox 360, 
And like I said before, I always like to pick up from software games. I always go up in value. At one point, this game was over 50 bucks. And at 210, we got Tomb Raider by Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics. This is when they revamped the Tomb Raider case to feel more like the Uncharted series. This one is amazing. Give this game a shot for sure. And following we got Tales of Vesperia by Bandai Namco. Released in 2008 and when this game first came out it was exclusive to the Xbox 360. It was later remastered on the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. It's the 10th game in the series and they got a 79 on Metacritic. And at 212 we got Top Spin 2 by 2K Sports. So this is basically 2K Sports version of Virtual Tennis and it was released pretty early for the Xbox 360. Alright, and at 2.13, we got one of my favorites, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Now, this is pretty much an expansion to Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Classic Capcom, instead of just releasing the DLC, they repackaged the game and sell it again. And of course, I go out and buy it. Alright, and at 2.14, we got Ultra Street Fighter 4 by Capcom and Dims. Now this is the last and best Street Fighter 4 game released for the 7th generation. If you're a Street Fighter fan, this is a must own. Alright and next we got Velvet Assassin by South Peak Games and Replay Studios. Now this game right here pretty much plays like the Hitman games. This one is actually worth almost $90. following we got Venetica by Rumbox Games. Now this one right here is like an action RPG. It's not that great but this game keeps going up in value. It got a 42 on Metacritic and it was released in 2011. And at 217 we got Virtual Fighter 5 by Sega. Now this is basically Sega's version of a 3D fighter. It's easy to learn, but it's hard to master. One of the first 3D fighting games I ever played, and they got an 89 on Metacritic. And at 218 we got The Walking Dead by Telltale Games. Now this is the game of the year edition, and it comes with all the DLCs. If you never played these games, try these out for sure. This game got a bunch of sequels, but I still think the first game is the best one, and it's a Metacritic must play. And at 219, we got WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 by THQ and Ukes. Now remember, this is one of the first games I got with my Xbox 360, and this is still my original copy from 2007. The game features a bunch of ECW wrestlers as well. And of course, the follow-up, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2009, again by THQ and Ukes. That's the same team that's been developing all the SmackDown games, all the way from like the original PlayStation 1. And at 221, we got WWE 2K14 by 2K Sports and Ukes. So basically after 2K Sports took over the franchise, Ukes came over and kept developing the games. And this is actually one of the best ones right here. If you see this one out for cheap, trust me, pick it up. This was the first game that featured the WrestleMania mode. And at 2.22 we got X-Men Origins Wolverine by Activision and Raven Software. That's the same team that did the Marvel Ultimate Alliance game and Singularity. Now this game right here has been skyrocketing in price after the Deadpool and Wolverine movie came out.
All right, and next we got X Blades by South Peak and Gaijin Entertainment. So Blades of Time is actually a reboot of this game. It has the same character, but they changed up the storyline. The game is pretty janky, but I see this one gaining value after a while. And at 224, we got the Xbox Live arcade compilation disc. Now this game right here comes with like 6 or 7 games and a couple of demos. I picked it up after the marketplace closed. I was like, hey, what the heck, you get to play some of these old arcade games. And last but not least, at 225, we got Young Justice Legacy by WB Games and Freedom Factory. So this game is pretty similar to Diablo 3. It plays like Marvel Ultimate Alliance with that above head camera view, but you only get to play with three characters instead of four. Alright guys, so there you have it. That was part two of my Xbox 360 collection. We ended off at 225 games, and I've already picked up a couple of more titles since I recorded this video. So stay tuned because there's a lot more coming. More pickups, more collections, and more surprises. Again, thanks for the support. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.